In today's video, we're going to take a look at 2024 theme and WooCommerce and try to answer the question, is 2024 a great theme for selling stuff with WooCommerce? Let me cut to the chase. The answer, like a lot of things, is it depends. Keep watching. Let's find out. But before we get there, just some notes I want to mention. Today's goal is to review the header area, including this cart icon and navigation you see at the top of the screen. Place a recent product block on the homepage so that we can kind of see how we can display WooCommerce products. And then just review WooCommerce patterns in general to see if they have what we need to design great looking product pages. This is really just a briefing, not a deep dive into WooCommerce setting, taxes, add-on configuration, or heavy site customization. Basically, just want to be able to show off what we can or cannot edit with WooCommerce, with the 2024 theme. So if you're evaluating whether or not you should use this uh, with WooCommerce, maybe at the end of this video, you can make that distinction. Okay, I'm on the homepage 2024. This is sort of the default homepage experience. And I've got WooCommerce already installed. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, we have the cart icon, shopping cart icon. It shows number two because there's two items in there. What I did was make a an ebook as a digital product, just one digital product on this site. And we're gonna just go through the experience just to see how these pages look. Make sure there's nothing really far off that says, you know what, this is not ready to use with WooCommerce. Let's start with that cart. When we click this, we have a little tray that slides open, allows us to look at what's in our cart. You can see I've added two. Everything looks fairly good here. I mean, the, the interface works. I can add items as I'm adding items. All of this is updating just fine. It's readable. I get it. Nothing here looks broken. If you've been trying to use WooCommerce like years ago with, with themes that were not specifically made for WooCommerce, a lot of these like really unique pages and metadata areas or areas of metadata were really broken. And while maybe the single product page looked okay, everything else was terrible. <laughs> I don't see any of that happening with 2024 and WooCommerce, not yet anyway. Let's click on view my cart. Now we'll go into the cart page here. Again, everything here looks and feels okay. Like nothing here is jumping out and saying, man, none of this looks really broken to me. We can add coupon. The coupon field appears fine. Oftentimes what you would find again in themes that are not supporting WooCommerce or haven't been updated for WooCommerce, a lot of this stuff is not styled and it, and it looks really broken. This doesn't look that terrible to me or terrible at all. <laughs> Some of this metadata here looks fine. Maybe a little tight in the item sort of information here, but if you have many items in a cart, maybe you know it's just a non-issue, okay? So everything here looks fine in the cart. Let's go ahead and proceed to checkout. And I think the checkout actually looks fairly good. You know, a lot of the times you would not see any of this styling. Form fields look great. Everything is stylized. I like the little design between the one and the two, that sort of line indentation. I'm not a designer, but I, I think it looks fantastic. You can add a note to your order. All of that works. Payment options are not configured on this because I'm just showing you this as an experiment. But if I had PayPal, Stripe, you'd have credit card fields, PayPal icons, Venmo icons. I mean, all of this stuff looks great and there's nothing here that jumps out and says, hey, this, this is really broken, okay? So that's just a brief process of looking at the cart into the checkout. Let's move to the shop page. This is where it loads all of our uh, products here. Again, doesn't have a lot of, we don't have a lot of products. We just have one product that I made. So in terms of showing this one product, looks fine. If you only had one, two, three products in your WooCommerce store, depending on what you're selling online, hey, if you're selling an ebook, selling a course, selling a membership, selling something else that's not a lot of volume, not a lot of SKUs, I, I, you know, I think you're going to get away with using WooCommerce in 2024. Let's click on the featured image. This will bring us to the individual page. This page arguably is the one that look, probably doesn't look the best out of the box. We're using the full width of the content with 2024. It's okay. I think there could be some better margins and paddings around all of this content. But, you know, if you're selling an ebook, if you filled out more of this content, more of this information, it might look 
a little bit better. But, you know, images work. It's got the little sale icon because I have it marked as a sale. Sale price, original full price works fine. Add to cart buttons, the category shows up. Tabs are there. If you wanted to leave a review, folks could leave a review there. So I don't really see anything missing or anything really glaring in the overall experience of browsing, buying a product, adding it to a cart, viewing your cart and checking out. I think it works fairly well. Now, where it can all come crumbling down is when you start to try and customize the experience inside the site editor. This is not ready for prime time. I'd say that with the exception of just a few different items that we can customize to really change the look and feel of our site, there's not a whole heck of a lot you're going to do unless you're super knowledgeable about customizing a WordPress theme. So let's go ahead and edit this header template part. This is where your primary navigation and this cool little site icon is 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 located, right? So it's up here in our header. So when we click on this shop icon or a cart icon, just like the mobile customizations for the, the hamburger menu, there's not many. You have three here. By default, it's the shopping cart. If you don't like the shopping cart and you want a bag, you have two choices. <laughs> you have two shopping bags that you can switch from and you can turn, you can toggle off that display price if you don't want that there. You can also change the way that the drawer opens up, the mini cart drawer as it's known. So when you add an item with this active, it'll open up that drawer and you'll see the item add to your cart, or you can just disable this and it would just be a silent ad. You'd see that number change up top so if you had this activated, so you'd know that that was being added. If not, it would just be there in the cart and you, the user wouldn't see it until they actually went to the cart page to begin the checkout process. That icon is just a block. You can move it around. You can change the location of it. You can put it anywhere. You can put it anywhere in your templates, in your template parts. When you're building a page in the block editor, you can always have access to that cart. Let's go back and look at the patterns. And this is where things get a little confusing. And this is where it really starts to fall down because I think there's some great sort of call to action patterns here in 2024. I think these are these are great. They look good. A lot of the banners and hero images and how they sort of handle some of like the team pages with 2024. It's fairly opinionated, but I think it looks good and it can be molded to a lot of different small business websites. But man, the WooCommerce patterns are really lacking. And when you start to look at the different featured products, a lot of this stuff isn't your typical layout for for products. And I know it's a hard thing to try to answer for all types of e-commerce sites, all types of products that people might sell. But I think what they should really focus on is that query block that allows you to have the different look and feel of like a grid layout, how many columns, how many rows, that kind of thing, and changing sort of the call to action with the buttons. I mean, some of this stuff works a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think the easiest thing to do, especially if you're using 2024, is to just jump into your template or block editor and add the WooCommerce blocks for your products if you want to feature them on a homepage or landing page. At least that's my opinion. You might have better luck using these patterns. I feel like these patterns are a bit of a miss for me. And that's why we'll do it with the WooCommerce blocks in the block editor. Okay, here we are in the block editor of our homepage. We're just going to add in a WooCommerce block. That way you can kind of see what it is that we can do with 2024 and WooCommerce. So if we scroll down and we go to the WooCommerce blocks that we have, there's a bunch of things that we can do. We can product search, we can activate filters, but the only thing I'm focused on right now is adding in the newest product. So I'm going to put this right there and we're going to make this a wide width, which will bring it much more wide width to our, to our content. If we went full width, that would go a little bit outside the bounds there. And I don't really particularly like that. So we'll leave it wide width there. And that's really just the most recent products. If I had more products, it would fill it out and it would fill it out between these parameters here columns and rows. So it's three columns, three rows. In our case, we only have one column because we have one product and we don't even need any more than one row because we only have one product in this case. So if you're a small 
publisher or you're selling a handful of digital products like a lot of digital marketers might do or small online business owners might do, eh, it's a fantastic little block to add this type of feature into your homepage. And we're going to update that, view it so that you can see that the functionality here is right there. It's add to cart. This doesn't necessarily look that good. You probably want to have more products than this. But if we went and did something like bring in a heading and said latest products, put that above, let's go wide width on that. And I'm going to really aggravate some people right now. <laughs> and I'm going to use a spacer block and give that there because it's a lot faster than going in and adding margin and padding. So now we have a little bit of breathing room between our product and the rest of the information on our homepage. Looking at the homepage again, isn't going to look that much different than there, but there it is. We've successfully enabled and put in uh, the product onto our homepage. Again, it's just like using Gutenberg blocks in any other scenario. If we go shop, we'll have access to all of our products at any given time, but just on the homepage, we're adding the latest products. And as you add them, they'll appear right here. So as I've mentioned, I think WooCommerce and 2024 pair fairly well together. If I, I would recommend it if I'm somebody who doesn't have a lot of products, maybe you're just digital products only, online digital marketer, eBooks, memberships, courses, that kind of thing. I think that when you're looking at WooCommerce as a viable solution for your business, you probably also want to back that with a theme that has a lot more WooCommerce capabilities. Cadence, Generate Press, or page builder plugins like Elementor, Bricks, and Beaver Builder. So 2024, still rocking this theme. I still really appreciate this theme. Uh, I think it's going to take people a long way into the future, even when 2025 comes out. Something tells me that 2024 is still going to be a shining star um, especially as WooCommerce gets better with uh, support for their patterns and uh, customizing the templates. I think 2024 will be around for quite some time. Let me know what you think in the comments. What else do you want to see with 2024? Let me know what you think in the comments. Have questions, concerns? You're launching a new WordPress project and you want to ask me some questions? You can hop on the fast track. Go to the wpminute.com slash fast. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one to chat about your next WordPress project project. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. We'll see you in the next one.